we start out with a Fox News alert. Donald Trump announcing plans to expand our military if he becomes president of the United States. Hello, everyone. I'm Heather Noward, and we're taking a look at Donald Trump's proposals. He says he'll have a plan from Pentagon leaders within 30 days to defeat ISIS. He also plans to call on Congress to eliminate the defense sequester and submit a new budget, developing a state-of-the-art missile defense system, as well as upgrading ballistic missile defense systems in our naval cruisers. He also he also plans to ask Joint Chiefs of Staff to review all military technology, including power grids and infrastructure from cyber attacks. Trump also highlighting what he says are the reasons that Hillary Clinton is not fit to be Commander in Chief. Listen. Sometimes it seemed like there wasn't a country in the Middle East that Hillary Clinton didn't want to invade, intervene in, or topple. She's trigger happy and very unstable. Whether we like it or not, that's what's going on. Amber Smith is a former U.S. Army helicopter pilot and author of Danger Close, My Epic Journey as a Combat Helicopter Pilot in Iraq and Afghanistan. And Johnny Joey Jones is a retired Marine bomb technician. Uh, thank you both uh, for joining us. Amber, let me start with you. And I want uh, first I want to say thanks to you both for what you've done for our country in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And there's nobody better, perhaps, to talk about this than people who've actually been in the fight. Amber, let's start with you and get your reaction to Trump's speech today. Well, I saw Commander-in-Chief material right there. I saw a leader who cares deeply about our military, who cares about rebuilding it to levels that is not hindering our military and national security. Uh, over the past eight years, the military has been slashed to pre-World War II levels. And so that's asking to do our military, men and women in uniform, to do more with less. So that puts them at a greater risk, and they're not getting the training that they need uh, to go into harm's way and to serve in those combat positions. We need a commander-in-chief who's mm -hmm. going to make sure that they go in with the proper training and the best assets and resource in the world to complete the mission. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, excuse me, uh, Joey, you were in the, uh, you served in the Marine Corps, and uh, one of the plans would be to I increase troop levels, well, really all throughout the branches of the military. What would that actually do for our armed forces? Well, first, as a Marine, uh, boot camp is all about doing more with less. So I'm not directly opposed to that. But what's going on with our military right now is an arbitrary sequestration. It's a tool that Jay Carney brought to light in a press conference the, uh, and really pinned it on the administration. It was uh, a ploy to get uh, Senate Republicans to pass the budget that uh, President Obama wanted. And it, it is hurting our military. Um, but, you know, what this will do, if Donald Trump gets in office, I don't need a 10-point plan, a 20-point plan. I need a three-point plan. And I'm here in Austin. I've got Carl Rose uh, whiteboard <laughs> with me. We need a goal. We need a strategy. And then we need to talk about how to pay for it. All right. Well, and then, that's what we need. I love that whiteboard right there. That's fantastic. Good for you. Uh, Amber, let me ask you about some of those things right there, because I bet you'll agree that we need a goal. Uh, Donald Trump says that he will have a plan from our military officials to defeat ISIS, well, it's not to defeat ISIS within 30 days, but wants a plan within 30 days. Is that realistic? I think a plan and a strategy to go in and defeat ISIS, I think that's uh, more than reasonable. He basically has, has gave, given the Pentagon notice, look, if I'm the next commander in chief, you guys better have a plan to me within 30 days of me taking office that is going to allow our military to go in and wipe out ISIS. We've been at war with them for over two years now. Mm. 30 days is very reasonable. We haven't seen it from the president or the administration that we have today. And so I think it is perfect timing. I, I think that we're going to see out of a Trump administration uh, a Pentagon that's going to have to, you know, act quickly. All right, and so, so take Joey, out some we're of these talking threats. about a plan then, but then what's the follow on plan? As we've seen, you know, our U.S. military can take back territory as they've done with ISIS, but yet, can we hold it? Can we keep it? Can we have a stable well, government exactly. that, gee, is an ally? That would be nice. Well, you know, and this is where we're in the middle of a presidential election, so I get it. We have to make promises that gets people to the ballot box. Quite honestly, I don't care about 30 days. I don't care about complete removal of sequestration. What I want to know is what is our goal before my brothers and sisters go back over there, because I think they'll have to in order, they're already there, but I think more of them will have to go. Before we get into all of that, what is the goal? What are we going to accomplish? We, we went and took out Saddam. We left the void. ISIS is there. For two administrations, and this week for 15 years, we've been at war, and I don't know if we've ever had a clearly defined goal of what we're trying to accomplish, or at least one we stuck with. So 
what I want to see from Donald Trump, and I'm not saying he's not doing it. I'm saying I'm not focused on if this happens in 30, 60, or 90 days. I'm focused on is it a sustainable goal and is it a strategy that however long it takes to put together is something that will last and something that makes sense for that region. All and right. if we see those things, let's pay for it. I'm all about it. And pay for it too. Uh, let's listen to a, a bit of Donald Trump's speech from earlier today in which he's talking about classification. Hillary Clinton has taught us really how vulnerable we are in cyber hacking. That's probably the only thing that we've learned from Hillary Clinton. <laughs> One of the first things we must do is to enforce all classification rules and to enforce all laws relating to the handling of classified information. Hmm. I guess and not just do it selectively. Amber, your reaction to that? Hillary Clinton could not get the security clearance that I had and was required to obtain to be a Kiowa warrior helicopter pilot in the Army because she disregarded procedures, she disregarded the law, and she made decisions that put our national security in jeopardy. Uh, those are facts right there. And so I don't want a commander in chief who, who has a disregard uh, for what is best for this nation and the people who put themselves out there and the reason that some of those classification levels exist. Uh, that to me, uh, sh that she doesn't have that common sense, or even if it's just a complete disregard for it. Uh, regardless, either way, um, that's not something that should be, uh, you know, allowed mm -hmm. to be a commander in chief after you do All what right. you did with the email scandal. Uh, Amber Smith, we're going to have to leave it there. Proudly served the U.S. Army and flying helicopters. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Joey Jones, thank you so much, Marine Bomb Technician. Thank you for your service, both of you. Thank you, Heather. Absolutely.